Welcome to the show, What is a Little Girl Supposed to Do? The show is about survival, perseverance, and redemption. Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to What is a Little Girl Supposed to Do? We're all about perseverance, forgiveness, and love. And today is part of Black History Day. My younger brother, Bobby, Louis Olive, he was also known as Bobo. Today would have been his 64th birthday, but he became Oregon's first heart transplant donor on December the 4th, 1985. He was in a wrong place at the wrong time. He was shot in the head, brain dead, and the doctor asked my mother if she would donate my brother's heart because there was someone that was in desperate need of a heart transplant. Mm -hmm. They hadn't given the person too much longer to live, like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. My mother said yes. So Mm -hmm. my brother, Bobby Olive, Black History Month, We always celebrate it, and we just want people to show their love with one another, and if you can give back on your way out, why not? So that is the message today in remembrance of my brother, the first heart transplant donor. The first one of Oregon. Yes. Wow. Wow. So we made some history. We made some history here in good old Portland, <laughs> Portland, Oregon, Oregon. Right. Portland, yes. Oregon. We yes. made a little bit of history here. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, so then I want to say this. I want to say that we made history, and then also we have an organization that's made some history here in Portland as well. Yes. And they have came to treat us today with the knowledge, with the information, um, that is so very needed for our men. Um, and we were so blessed with their presence. We were so blessed with their presence that um, we had them come back for part two. And so today we now have Brother Nolan that has joined us. And we were just talking to him about his, uh, he's been doing a lot of traveling um, he's been different places and he has different experiences. And so we are so excited to have him here on our podcast today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank coming. You, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so then you can just go ahead and I want to say, do I have your name correct? You do. Yes, ma'am. Brother Nolan. Um, and were you from, are you from Portland, Oregon? I was born and raised here. Really? Really? I'm okay. a 90s baby. Ooh. I, I made it in oh, the 80s, right. so I'm 80s, 90s. Yes. 80s, 90s. Cool. So then please tell us um, a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, <clears throat> you know, growing up here in Portland, mm-hmm. back when we had a black community and things like that, yeah. you know, it was challenging. So I, I found myself doing a lot of things that I shouldn't have been doing at a young age. Understandable. So I got into... You know, weed, Mm -hmm. alcohol, all that before the age of 12. Okay. And so, you know, my mother was raising me and she tried many different programs. So at one point in time, she sent me to the House of Emotion. So I think I got sent to the House of Emotion at the age of 11. And I was the youngest one there. And so that's how crazy my life was. But I learned some principles from that time in Emotion. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, man, if this is anything like jail, I ain't trying to go back here. So, you know, I got out of emotion, you know, got a little older and started, you know, going through some things as well. So then my mother sent me to live with my father. Okay. That became an issue because I'm 14 now. I didn't develop my own man. Right. So I can't have a man trying to teach me. And, you know, now that I reflect back, he may have been trying to teach me the proper things as a man, but I had developed my own man. So. That didn't work, and by the age of sixteen, my mother saw that um, you know, I, well, she she felt I was going down the wrong path. I didn't see it then, but she mm-hmm. felt it and she saw it. And so, my sister had joined the military, so she sent me to Europe to live with my sister in Italy for three years. Wow. And it was at that moment when I went there. At first, well, she kind of tricked me. 
<laughs> she told me, um, she said, you'll go there just for the summer. And then the summer became do a school year. <laughs> and then it became, why not graduate there? So, you know, I went there and being over there changed my whole perspective on life because as black men, we don't really get these type of experiences. And so I have a lot of friends that never even been to Seaside and they're dead now. Wow. And so going over there and, and seeing what their culture was like and being able to feel what it's like just to not walk around to where my guards is down, but not having the same mindset of when I was walking around town over here, you're constantly looking because we're taught and trained that the black man is the enemy. So anytime, you know, you see other group of black people walking by, we get antsy. Right. You know, we got to watch them because they, they're there to harm us. Right. But over there, I was just able to live. Okay. But I grew up because we were doing adult things over there because the legal ages are different. Okay. So coming back, you know, um, coming back, I was like, man, this is different. I want to be able to get this type of experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I met Brother Will in 2009. I was going around the Nation of Islam then. Okay. And I met him and he told me about BMIT. Okay. And I was like, that sounds like a dope program. That sounds like something I can be a part of because I knew where I came from and I knew I didn't want what I was doing for others. Right. So I was like, you know, I can be a part of this. So 2009, 2012, you know, we kept talking about BMIT and let's build this, let's build this. You know, let's focus on this, but it was difficult. But it was 2018 where we sat down. I'll never forget, we had coffee at a Starbucks and or we had tea. Mm. And he was like, I want to rebuild BMIT. And I was like, bro, if you want to do this, I'm here with you because I believe in the program because I believe in what we're doing. You know, I joined the Nation of Islam because I saw it was a different way of life. It wasn't so much as the religious aspect yes. that pulled me. It was the way of life and how I can change and become a better person, a better individual. Yes, I love it. And that's what I saw. And so with BMIT, when we started this, and that's what, like, man, we can give back to these youth. We can teach these youth. Yes. You know, teach them new experience. Show them life. And so we, we've been really pushing BMIT ever since. And, man, and, um, you know, reflecting. And, and it was cra it's a crazy story. That um, one of my mentors, as I was growing up, he was always trying to, bro, come on, get off the streets, bro. Nah, let's go. Let's go to the Boys and Girls Club late night. Let's go play basketball. Let, let's go do this. Let's go. Nah, bro, don't go to that party. He was trying to keep me off the streets. Mm -hmm. I found out in 2019 that he was a product of black men in training from 1995 or 1996, the first time wow. when BMIT was launched. So he took what he learned from Brother Will, and he was trying to give back to me when he saw me out there. Okay. Beautiful. Now, right. what are the ages of the young men that's in BMIT? That's so involved? the young the young men that we serve are, ranges from the ages from five to nineteen, but then we also tell men that, like Brother Will say, it's not a um a destination; it's a journey. So even afterwards, we deal with men. Mm -hmm. But as far as the programs wise, from the ages from five to nineteen. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, and there you can see the change, or you see what the training is bringing about through the leadership and teaching the young men? Do you see the, some of the results happening? Yes, ma'am. And um, we see it, but the biggest thing is we can hear it from them. Beautiful. Because it's, it's one thing that we can come and tell you what these young men are doing, mm -hmm. but it's a, another thing when they can come and you hear it from their mouths Beautiful. what they've learned and how they're living and what they're experiencing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That's that's amazing, that's right? Amazing. And what is okay? So I I hear you say BMIT. What is it? What does it stand for? So BMIT. Now that's the acronym, but Black Men in Training. Black Men in Training. And, and you know, with that name, that's always been like, that's the eye catcher for people. For for our people, yes. we look at that. We be like, man, I love that. Right. But for others, at times they be like, well, what are you training them for? <laughs> like well, we didn't have people say like, are you training them? to carry AKs and stuff. And I'm like, nah, we already doing that. <laughs> we ain't got to train. We're trying to train them the proper way of certain things. And so we always okay. tell people to look up the definition of training to actually see what it is that we're doing as black men for these okay. young men. Beautiful. Training. Beautiful. So then train, so then training consists of everything. Ooh. Training is, is, is so widespread that it's everything. I love you know, it. We're teaching them how to be young men, how to be respectful. That's training. We have to train yes. our minds. We basically, you know how they say, uh, don't do that. You know, they're going to brainwash you. Yeah. Well, our brains has been dirty. So, right. yes, you have to get your brain washed in order to move forward. Yes. Because right now, the way we're living, we're not trained. We're untrained. We're uncivilized. Yes. 
And the duty of the civilized man is to mm-hmm. resurrect the civilized man, the uncivilized. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yes. It is. And so how long have you been a part of, uh, you said B-Mint. 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 So I've been a part of B-Mint. I say 2012 is when I stepped okay. into the role and really started helping. 2018, we relaunched. We called it B-Mint Resurrection because we brought it back from the dead and We've been going strong since. Brought it back from the dead. Beautiful. I love it. And you are yes. here in Portland, Oregon. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, if anyone wanted to get involved in the program, what would they have to do? To get involved in the program, we do have a website you can go to. You look over the website. You can fill out an um, application. Okay. And you can email us or contact us. Okay. We're really, um, we run it like we like a family mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, that's that's what it needs. That's what it takes. You know, it takes a village to raise a family, to raise one. Yes. And so we're creating that village. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm so happy because from what I understand, you know, living through the gangs when the gangs were really out there. I remember the first shooting, I think that was in the 80s. I can't remember. It was Ray Ray Winston out in the Columbia Villa. And the gang members would say, they became gang members because they didn't have a family or anyone at home to make them feel like they were loved and a family. That's why a lot of the gangs begin. That's how they begin because they had that closeness closeness and love with one another. And so I believe what black men in training is doing, showing them love and how to have a family, true love, this is amazing. It is because, um, you know, we say we are a righteous gang. Not not really, yes. but I, I say that talking yes. to people because that is why people join gang, you know, gangs, you know, for the fellowship, the yes. brotherhood, the yes. protection, yes. Right? just to be involved in something. Yes. And so, like, one thing about BMIT, you know, a lot of we're not just after one set of youth. We're not just yes. going after the bad ones, the almost gang members. No, we want the ones that you know, are lonely, the ones that feel like they're outcasts. We want the right. ones that's getting straight A's. We Because at the end of the day, I know people who had straight A's that was doing good that came from great family backgrounds yeah. that decided to turn left. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so we just put the, put everybody in the pot. Yes. And we're going to make one big bowl of right. soup, and that's mm-hmm. how we're going to bring it out with these young men. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, and my, my daughter and I, she have a grandson. He's my great-grandson, but he's going to be five. Okay. <laughs> right? He's, right. Yeah, he's going to be five in August. And, I mean, this little gentleman, I mean, he's the little man already. He was the Eclipse baby. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he come up with so many thoughts that we would we have to scratch our head, like, where are you from? Right. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, you're asking us all these intelligent questions. He wants to know about our family history. Where is my mom? Where is my yo dad? What happened to them? She he said, "Tell me more. Tell me." I mean, and I'm like, "Okay, we sit down and have a good conversation." That's great. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, so we're gonna get him in this training program. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And I think that it's super, super important um, to have this organization. Uh, when you say black men in training, because I'm I'm learning, especially when. With last week when uh, Brother Will was here, I did not realize that, honestly, I did not realize all of the things that black men go through. Right, right. I did not, I did not know all the pressures and all of the, that how you, how black men was classified as being the endangered species. I did not know that. I did not know that. And so that honestly, that like touched my heart because of the fact even knowing that or even learning that you guys are classified as being endangered species and endangered species but then you guys are supposed to be a certain way and you're supposed to live a certain way and do a certain thing but then i know that it's hard because of all the pressures of getting a job and then if you're not hired because there might be some things that you have on your rec you know right right so it's tough and i did not know that And so I'm going to say as a woman, as a black woman, I'm my accountability of knowing or hearing that that is something that you guys have been through. It's tough. And I know that 
our words. Sometimes uh, we know how to say things that um, is meant to lead seriously, right. is mentally damaging. And if there's one little thing that we know about you that might be a little negative, we are going to throw that on you. We're going to say it. And so I'm, a, I'm apologizing because I did not know that every day that you guys walk out of the house, that you guys are targets for el- almost everything. Right. And I didn't know that. I did not know that. And I learned that yesterday. I mean, not yesterday, last week, um, that the pressures and the the burdens for men. And excuse me, I need to use the restroom. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, <clears throat> I accept your apology first. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's real. It's, it's serious and it's something that's not talked about. Mm-hmm. And then when we talk about it, you know, like my brother, brother Will always says, you know, it gets knocked down as toxic masculinity. Right. So we avoid it. And then for men to talk about certain subjects is difficult for us mm-hmm. because, you know, growing up, we don't, we don't, you know, you get talked about, you talk about things that seems too sensitive or anything like that or emotional. Right. But one thing I've always said, and people, you know, they got mad at me, but you know, you like keep it a hundred. Okay. Those of us that was raised by just our mothers, right. we are a tad bit more emotional, sensitive than those who are raised with men around them. Okay. Which is so, so we're dealing with that. And that's right. why, you know, right now it's big that the mental health is out there. Right. Because, you know, now men are starting to talk a little bit more. Right. And it's not about necessarily saying what the woman is doing. Cause I never point the finger at the black woman mm-hmm. of what she is doing, but I'm going to point it back to who, put y'all in this position who put us in this position right 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 because right, right. someone put us here because we didn't come here on our own right so someone took the man out and then someone said here talk bad about him do this depend on us oh no y'all can't like um i believe i heard your mother saying earlier that which i seen a documentary okay that how when section eight and everything like that right. started yeah they told the men they couldn't be there whether you were married or not no man could be in that house right so therefore that from that era on started the um okay now my husband can't be here. I can't be with him. Right. Now I have to sneak out to go on a date with him. Right. The man's really not going for that. So now you sneak out to go on a date with him. He's with another woman. Mm-hmm. Now you start. That's where everything started at. Yeah. And then you look at our, our household now, and that's where we've gone to. Right. But, um, you know, in black men in training, BMIT, our aim is to uplift. So, okay. you know, we had one brother, you know, he, he got in trouble because he was fighting his sister. Okay. No, 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 sir. We don't hit women. We don't do that. So okay. he had to come in and deal with his brothers because our goal is to uplift the woman, but to uplift us as well. Okay. So we can all grow. Okay. Wow. So then, okay. So then you heard a situation that was happening with one of the brothers that was a part of the black men in training. Yes. And you addressed that to him. Yes. Really? Yes. So, well, the young brother that uh, hit his sister, he had to, um, you know, I'm going to say he had to put the boxing gloves on and go through all the brothers. I got you. Because that's not what we're representing. That's not what we're doing. He knows how to represent black men in training. Okay. So, you know, we, we the way we deal with the young brothers, a lot of times there are some brothers who, when they come to be me, they, they don't want to be there, especially if they're growing up in a household full of women. Mm-hmm. So being in a group of men, they're like, I don't want to be here. But I have not found one that did not want to be there after going through them, you know, coming to okay. classes because it creates that brotherhood and that friendship. That makes sense. And I didn't, and he, and he's right. I didn't realize too, that there is a difference with when a woman is raising her children. I mean, especially when a woman is single mom and she's raising a son. Right. You know what I mean? Because us as women, we can't teach our sons how to be men. And so it does make sense that, if they're raised with a single mom, how they're, they are going to learn more about emotions, more about don't do that because that's not nice and it's okay. I don't know if, if, if it's been uh, said to you guys how I've always taught my son that it's okay to cry. It's okay to show emotions. You know what I mean? It's okay. Yes. And that's true. And we would like to thank Brother Nolan for joining us today and you will definitely see more of him 
in the future. We're going to bring on Brother Will next, but we want to thank you, Brother Nolan. Is there anything that you would like to say to the audience? Well, first, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to have some time in your space. Mm. You know, I'm truly honored, and um, this is my first time doing a podcast like this. Well, <laughs> yes. So, but um, I'm honored to be here, and mm. you know, the goal is to resurrect these young black men and help raise them. Uh-huh. And just to mention, we do also have black women in training Beautiful. as well. Beautiful. So, Whoa. Yes. That's, a, that's another, <laughs> yes. <for> another <laughs> day. <laughs> we nice. will be a part of that. <laughs> right. All right. Black yes, women in well, training. Ooh. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, brother. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank All you, right. thank you, thank you. Are you an aspiring model or actor? Let Northwest Modeling Management showcase the best version of you. Get in touch with our professional team at NWModelMGMT on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or visit our website at NWModelMGMT.com. Looking for the next face or personality for your company? Let Northwest Modeling Management find the talent you need for your brand. Yes. Because we got some people live still, so we want to thank oh. and thank everybody for tuning back into uh, what a little girl's supposed to do. We now have, um, hopefully, if you missed last week, it was a treat last week. So it was such a treat for us last week. We brought him back this week. So we have Brother Will, and he is here with Black Men in Training. Yes, yes. Thank you, Brother Will, for coming back. You're welcome. We appreciate you with your knowledge and understanding, and we're looking forward to some more of the teachings. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's, yes. A, it's a pleasure to be black with y'all. Yes. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, we just want Brother Will to share some more information with us and the community and people that's viewing um, okay. about well, the black men in training. Is there a particular thing that you would want to know about the black men in training? We we want to know everything what you're teaching our young black men okay. because us black women, yes ma'am, we're gonna have to help teach other black women okay what to look forward to once they connect with the black men that's in training. Yes ma'am, they're gonna be taught. They're gonna know what to expect. Right, you know they can trust and love. With all their heart and all their mind, because we know our black men, they've been trained. That's right. To treat their queen like a queen. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That's what I'm ready for. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm ready, ready to be. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to be treated like a queen. <laughs> and I want to know that. Uh, I want to know about this organization that you have that you were saying that you were training the black men. Yes, ma'am. So I mean, I, right? That yeah. I mean, I, I, mean right, I mean, yes. Okay. Yes, I would want to. I want to hear. I want to hear the things that you are doing for the black men in okay. the community because they are then going to be released um, for right. Right. They're going to be released uh-huh. for us to women. grab. Uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. And so we need to make ready as these young men are positioning themselves yes. to be providers maintainers and sustainers yes. of the queens yes we're praying to all god almighty that we will have queens for them that's right that are ready for their role as well yes, yes. so it has to be taught to both sides that's but we're right. going to deal directly specifically with the black man yes because many of us like i said before last week they said that we have dropped the ball mm-hmm. but in actuality the fact is the ball was taken from us yes it was out of our control yes okay yeah so they reared the woman the mother to raise her offspring in reverse roles. Yes. This book here explains all of that in Willie Lynch, The Making of a Slave. Yes. It's a little thin book, but heavy as hell. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it goes somewhat to the root. Yes. So we know that the black man in his current condition, he's not fit for self yes. or fit for anyone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he can't be a provider, maintainer, protector if he's just a older looking male. Yes. He still is just a male, has not yet evolved into manhood status. Okay. So he yes. knows nothing about providing for you or even how to act towards you mm-hmm. to invoke certain characteristics yes. and certain ways that he would want from his queen. Yes. He acts in an ill-affected manner that pushes your attraction naturally and affinity naturally that you should have towards him away. Mm-hmm. But he does it unbeknownst to himself. 
So we got to train them, one, to be disciplined. Okay. One, two, uh, what we teach in black men in training is one that, the, like I said last week, the two most important things for a man to ascertain is the day you were born is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And then the day you find out why you were born. Beautiful. That mm -hmm. is the young man or male understanding his purpose. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once he gets on his purpose, then he has a reason to go out and work. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as he's building his island, mm -hmm. after he has it built, then he will look for a queen to dock to his island. Beautiful. The problem is most of these males just build boats mm -hmm. and they trying to go out and find <laughs> girls and <laughs> who have boats yeah. Yeah. and they dock with boats in the middle of the water and just spin their oars and spin around and, run and get nowhere. Yes. And so she's frustrated. Well, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Mm -hmm. Well, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Mm -hmm. How can a woman get with a man who has no vision, mm -hmm. who isn't going anywhere, mm -hmm. who has built nothing, and yet it's going to bring no value at all to the world. The man's value is determined by what he's going to bring or the potential he has to bring to the world. Yes. So if he can't do that, mm -hmm. then what she's chasing is what they would call in the streets a pipe dream. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because these young males are just young, dumb, and full of stuff that they say in, in the streets, right? Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. we're gonna, if we're going to keep it a buck. Yes. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So she can't ascertain at all. Mm -hmm. Why can't this ninja act right? Mm -hmm. Well, a ninja was never meant to act right in the first place. Yes. A man was. Yeah. Man was. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to when God first, as we revisited, we'll revisit last week a little bit, when he made himself. In the Quran and in our Muslim prayer, we say that Allah is he who is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He neither begets, nor was he begotten, and there's none like him. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that means he is of no reputation. He is self-made. Mm -hmm. Made himself up from the triple darkness of space out of nothing. Mm -hmm. He is independent, but upon whom we all depend. So after making himself, he went into himself and made another version of himself and stepped back and said, Whoa, man. <laughs> that was good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so as he saw her, he didn't make her to be independent of himself. Mm -hmm. He made her to depend upon him yeah. because before he made the sun, the moon, the stars and all that, that was his first creation. So what is the importance of the black woman? Mm -hmm. She's extremely important. Mm -hmm. And this is why Satan is so mad. Mm -hmm. See, Satan understands mm -hmm. that the man he has to destroy. Now, he hates women. Mm -hmm. He do? Hates women. Why? Because you're a co-creator with God. Mm -hmm. You can reproduce another God. Yes. You are a co-creator. Mm -hmm. You're the second self of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. But he knows men are going to change certain things. Mm -hmm. So he hates women because he's somewhat envious of what you can do as being a co-creator with God. But he wants to and has to destroy men. Because without men, your communities won't thrive. Your families won't grow. We will be disenfranchised and everything else just totally obliter obliterated. Why? Because that's his design. God said, let us make man. The enemy said, nope, not in my world. I said, let us make niggas. And now we see niggas. Excuse, pardon that, yes. that, that term. Okay. Yes. And we've went from gods to niggas. Mm -hmm. And if you spell God backwards, it's dog. That's my dog right there. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes, yes. So we have to under, to get black to ourselves. Yeah. We have to retrain these young males to understand not just the importance of you, mm -hmm. God and himself, or God first, okay, mm -hmm. you and himself. Mm -hmm. He has to understand how to really even move effectively as a man. How do you move effectively in a, as a man when the whole conjecture of the world is conforming me to think that we don't love these Santa Claus helpers? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. We, right. We don't love these. All right? right. And if you love any of them, you lose your cool points. Right. right? Okay. You lose all cool points. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to have some type of status as a higher class male, 
I want to be accepted by my boys. Mm -hmm. I got to look cool. Mm -hmm. I can't show I got love for you. Mm -hmm. I got to show that, oh, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. No emotions at all. Mm -hmm. So we're operating off false data. Yes. And the data wants us to always treat you under us. Mm -hmm. So if we can always treat you that way, okay, because of what they're telling us, okay, then we do that in ine inevitably. Mm -hmm. But it's it's also a lie. Because the black woman has never, ever been under the same subjugation as the white woman has with her man. Mm -hmm. He's oppressed her. The black man has never had the power to oppress his woman. Mm -hmm. We've just been operating on false data, acting niggardly mm -hmm. and treating you substandardly. Mm -hmm. Treating you not like the queens that you are and should be. Mm -hmm. But he's also lied to you as well. And so that I heard you saying a little mm -hmm. earlier that, yeah, you never knew that black men went through certain things. So if we can teach these young men up and train them up in the way that they should go, then it's true that when they're older, it won't depart from them. Yeah. But we have to be able to train them. They need discipline. They need love. They need to know how to fight, mm -hmm. how to protect you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, we teach that. Beautiful. Yes, ma'am. Wow, you teach that's, that. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's great. And like Brother Noel said, you are seeing results from oh, some yeah. of the – young men that has been in your class that has gone through the training. There is visible and... Totally. Yes. And the parents, they rant and rave about it too. Beautiful. And it makes us feel good that we see that transformation. Yeah. We'll right. see our communities change when we do that. But a lot of it, we want our queens to work with us. That's right. Because if, they go, right, if they go home and they start to get deprogrammed because mom may be jaded a little bit by certain mm -hmm. things she sees right mm -hmm. well, who taught you that <laughs> right okay and this is why we encourage the parents to always always stay in contact with brother nolan and myself yes. and any of the black men and training staff mm -hmm. and uh to come to the meetings twice a month yes. because we want to help train you too mm -hmm. one we could definitely help you with your picking system yes the picking the picking the picking system the picking system and you okay so i'm just gonna i'm not gonna assume but you okay. mean by us as women the men that we pick or we yeah. select in our lives the yes. males the that male. you pick the males because you have most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. unfortunately mm -hmm. a lot of us mm -hmm. have not chosen men mm -hmm. we've chosen men males males and that's and that, and, and mm -hmm. it's to our detriment okay mm -hmm. because we upset you and now the whole house is out of whack mm -hmm. because we don't know how to perform and how to act mm -hmm. and so she's expecting well, you look like you a man. <laughs> what? Well, right. Ninja, be a man. Mm -hmm. No, hey, We don't know. We won't even know and understand until around, like we said before, 35 to 40 years old, really yeah. what this shell of a body of a male is supposed to be doing. We just yeah. now come into, I got a purpose? Yeah. Oh, dang. Okay. So what is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what it is. Then there's this burning desire inside and this fever mm -hmm. to bring it into fruition. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now, because the female, she's there. How important is the female? Yeah. We were talking a little bit earlier mm -hmm. that we're both vibrational beings, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the woman vibrates inwardly. Yes. She's a receiver. Mm -hmm. The male vibrates outwardly. He's naturally a pusher of his energy. Okay, so these microphones are plugged into something, yes? yes? Yes. If we were to just talk without microphones in here, our voice voices would be audible, but not to the extent that we're hearing it with its clarity right now. Right? Absolutely. Yep. And that's because it's plugged into something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What? A receiver. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what a woman really is, just like a receiver, the receiver amplifies what it's plugged into. So when a woman gets with a man who's on his purpose and he's going somewhere, mm -hmm. she amplifies his life yes. to help mm -hmm. his purpose come yes. into fruition. Okay. You understand? Absolutely. That's what it's about. Yes. But we have to be able to do this and teach the young men that to understand that part of the nature. Problem is, it never was taught and it never will be taught until we fully ascertain what's going on and have to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful. 
uh, I mean, in understanding, mm. uh, I mean, understanding a person that you're with, I think that it's, I mean, it goes hand in hand in hand. Yes. I think if you have a good understanding of yourself. Yes, ma'am. If I have a good understanding of myself, and then now we are working on pre, I mean, pro, what is it? Procreating, uh -huh. right? Right. I think that the odds mm -hmm. are a little better. Be, I mean, because I know that, I, like I said, when you were here last week, I did not know that it took 35, 40 years. And so in the interim, yeah. I've dated men before they were in their 30s and they were 40s. And so me not understanding, and so that was some trial and error, <laughs> right? And yes. so if you're saying that a man, I'm, I'm in my 40s. And so yes. if you're saying that a man goes through him trying to figure out, so when I was in my 20s, Yes. Dating. Yes. So then and now I'm having clear understanding that they didn't know. There and then by them not knowing, mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I was learning too. And so I was like, oh my goodness. Yes. I'm just, I just want to just be single. Yep. <laughs> they were treating you like you were, you were a toy. A toy. A toy. Well, wait, 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 a toy. Yeah, a toy. Okay. They were treating you like you were a toy. Well, what do boys like to play with? Toys. They really don't, though. Different kind of toys. Oh, do all, they? All we like Captain Marvels. Oh, you guys? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I'm being, I'm being comical, but I, I'm, yeah. I, Okay, yeah. got you, got yeah. you, got yeah. you. Yeah, that's what I said. We were like toys. And okay. we like choo-choo trains and race cars. <laughs> right. Sets and we still like yes. PS5s. Video, yeah, video games. Video games. Yeah. Yeah, boys yeah. still like toys. I got mm. you. Yes. The problem is a lot of men. Okay, in this world we go through a lot of things. This is what that Dianetics part is so so good. Okay, see the toys you play with in the dark that nobody sees. That's where your character is known. Yeah, and a lot of boys have been playing playing with certain toys, and we don't know how to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And we need a space where we could, yes. because not only were we playing with toys, sometimes the playing happened on and to us mm -hmm. yes. and we become scarred human beings. Yes. R. Kelly's and everything. Not to put no shade on that yes. brother. Right. Hey, I still love R. Kelly. Yes. What people don't understand is none of us are what we have done. Yes. All of us have had something that happened to us that we're ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And every single one of us have done things that we are totally ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And anybody who says, no, that not me. Okay, then if we had a thought reader and every time you went outside, <laughs> it amplified all your thoughts mm -hmm. vividly, mm -hmm. audibly, yeah. and mm -hmm. visually, Ooh. would you take your behind outside? No. <laughs> exactly. No. So all of us have fallen short yes. of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. The problem is since we're all can be likened unto, so they said we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say it's like we're, like to use this, but let's say we're, we're like turds in a commode. I know okay. it's nasty, okay? <laughs> like turds in a commode, all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now, I've been fortunate enough not to fall outside the, to the toilet. Mm -hmm. But I see one down there on the floor, and I say, ooh, I can smell you now. Look at you. You just, you kind of all squishy and spread out stuff. You nasty. Mm -hmm. But I'm a turd up in the commode that just haven't fell out for everybody to see. Right. But I'm in yeah. the commode with a whole bunch of other turds trying to put the exploits of what I see in this one. Look how bad he is. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself. Right. right. All of us right. have, okay? Yes. Yes. So yeah. everything with black men in training, we deal with that. That part is the psychological piece and the mental piece. Why? Because these young men actually are obviously killing themselves too. Yeah. Suicide is a huge killer right. yes. amongst these young black men. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Not, yes. If, not if they're just going out there and just shooting Ray Ray and Pookie. But that whole activity without them even taking the gun on themselves is basically suicide. Right. Yes. Having all type of sex without protection yes. and doing stupid things is suicide. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eating the wrong foods at the wrong times, yes. not understanding mm -hmm. what to do is suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of things we'd have to teach these young men all the way away. Mm -hmm. Because if we reared our children in Satan's world schools, mm -hmm. man, 
We've been messed up. We are totally under the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And this is why we got to get back to black men in training. Can you prove that the educational system is under the mark of the beast? Well, sure we can. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, right? Mm -hmm. And it's number 666. Well, when you start first grade, usually you're about six years old. By the time middle school passes, another six, or you're done with middle school, six more years pass, right? Mm -hmm. When you graduate high school, isn't that another six years? Mm -hmm. How many sixes is that? Three. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's the whole educational system. Mm -hmm. So this is what they've been going to school learning mm -hmm. because Satan is busy mm -hmm. at the minds of these young men and women mm -hmm. to destroy mm -hmm. everything so that we can never, ever come to together as a cohesive unit, as a family, and operate efficiently mm -hmm. the way God meant us to. So once we get black to ourselves, then we good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes, ma'am. Beautiful. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. We're in 2022. I mean, we didn't seen and experienced a lot. Yes, ma'am. I mean, in this pandemic, starting in 19, 2019, it has brought forth so much. Yes. I mean, a lot of people have learned they found out who they really are, you know. So we in 2020, and we want to make a difference okay. in everybody's lives. We want to make a difference. I see it. Too. So we're going to do this. Beautiful. And we want to thank our brother Will for coming in <laughs> and just showing some love and some knowledge. And you're going to hear more from him and brother Noah. Yes, ma'am. But uh, we want to thank you. Have a beautiful family, and we need to hang in there and raise these queens that's coming up behind us. That's right. We need to teach them the art of being in the kitchen, putting together some food. I mean, that's like a science. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because food will keep us here, and depends on what you're eating, it can take you out of here, too. That's right. So mm. this is one thing that these young women need to know how to cook from scratch, and what's good for them. Mm. You know, because food is good for our soul and our bodies and our minds. I mean, it have a lot to do with mm -hmm. the things that we do in this life. And so that's so important. But we're here, and we just want to thank you for coming and being our guest again. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yes. So is there anything mm. else you would like to add before we close? Wrap uh, us up. Right. Like Check us up. Go to, right. go to, go to blackmwit.com. Blackmwit.com. Go to the website. If you know young men that need help, sign your young man up. Beautiful. Tell somebody about black men in training. There are groups out there that are really actively doing something. We are just one particular one that actually have boots to the ground. Beautiful. And so we train these young men to stay ready. So they don't have to get ready. Beautiful. Black men in training. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh. It's been a treat. And then I would like to know too, um, like with closing, what would you like us black women to know? I would like you to know that though the conjecture that's portrayed about your black men, which says that we ain't sugar, honey, iced tea. Okay. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. Right. Okay. We are much more than what the media portrays, but we have to come back to who we are. We have been without the knowledge of who we are and we need y'all help. We can't do it without the black woman. Heaven lies at the foot of the queen. You are God's first creation before he made anything after making himself. That means you are most important. And since no civilization can be any higher than what the woman is, Mary McLeod Bethune says, what? Mm -hmm. No nation can rise any higher than this woman. That's right. Okay, and whatever you see, no good women, you'll see no good men. Mm -hmm. Help us help you. Yes. Okay. Listen to black men. Find out what men really want. Right. Okay? okay. Don't listen to your girlfriends while you're getting your, new, your nails done. I mean, they got a little things they might know from experiences, mm -hmm. but their experiences are operating off false data. Mm -hmm. 
and don't ask males. Mm -hmm. Vet that male to find out if he's a man mm -hmm. and ask him, mm -hmm. and he should give you sound advice. Mm -hmm. But he must be rooted in God, too. That's right. Because that's where it all comes from. That's right. And that's what the nation teaches us. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us. Yes, yes ma'am. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tell me that, too. Mom, this has been this has been awesome. We are doing a part two. Once again, thank you so, 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 so much for joining us. Yes, um, second week. Uh, I would love the continuation. I would love to get together with you more to talk about this and to um, conversate about it and to be able to get our boots on the ground, too. Um, I would love for, you know, when you say you got black women in training, I would love yes, to see, yes, what, uh, that is too. And Good. so this has been a treat. This has been knowledge. This has been food for my soul. Um, this is, it's come at the right time. The sun is out. So there's a lot of, huh. uh, a lot of sun rays, a lot of vitamin D. Okay. Um, so I'm excited. Good. I'm excited. And I thank you Me so too. much You're for, welcome. for us being able to drag you back down here, <laughs> back no down drag. again. No, no drag. <laughs> no drag. I actually wanted to come. I was excited to come back. I told mm. you y'all's energy is off yes. the hook. I appreciate that. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad I could help. I'll be black whenever you ask me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love it. I love thank it. You. I love it. Hey, thank hey, hey, hey. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for bearing with me today with this uh, trying to be live on Instagram. This is my second time going round two. Thank you, everybody, for watching us. Um, thank you once again for tuning in to What Is a Little Girl Supposed to Do? And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to our podcast, What Is a Little Girl Supposed to Do? Until next time.